it relates to that currency. So rather than those two are putting the most energy into mining it out of the ground, it's just the richest mofos get what they want to say, which feels like too much like the real world to me. Um, yes. And, you, and, and, and the, 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 the incentive of that, the, uh, with Peercoin, you get 1% of, of interest a year. And there's another type of, of proof of stake that I've heard of. Until it, you know, reach a certain peak, then everybody's on the Yeah, so, so it's, it's funny in this space because everybody uses you get so many copycats. That's just how it is. Yeah. Right. And then you got poker coin, which made specifically for people that want to play poker on these poker websites without getting caught by the U.S. You know, or whatever gambling laws yeah. there are. So, so it's game coin now. Too. Yeah, game coin. Right. Yeah. It's game. Yep. So, right. So each has its own unique features, and that's where. Uh, it's cryptocurrency. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much that's the whole purpose of all, all currencies. Is, yeah. uh, you know, different type of features for different users. First time I've been to one of these classes uh, and it was, uh, it was a great experience. Um, it was a little bit different than I expected where I learned a lot more about alternative currencies, alternative cryptocurrencies uh, that I was not even aware of. So I find it extremely illuminating given that I came here to learn a little bit about cryptocurrencies in general, so I would recommend it very strongly. Okay, great, awesome. They know that. Yeah, exactly. Like address A, since you yeah. address B, you know, like B, C, 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 C. And I mean, look, if you're if you're trying to launder over a thousand dollars, over ten thousand, and if you're trying to launder money or do like some heavy, then you're going to get caught, and it's it's going to be tracked down to you. Um, it's really really hard to get because there are choke points. Think about it like this: you can. You have to get money in and out of the Bitcoin system too. So go to the yeah, so it's private. No one cares. No one cares that you're using, you know, Bitcoin is used. Bitcoin is great for real right. entertainment, so they, gambling. So it, it kind of pinpoints because it's on a peer to peer network, so it kind of pinpoints exactly where you can able to make enough money to give myself a pretty high quality of living um, and explore some pretty cool places. I. I just got back after spending six weeks living, working in uh, South America. I was in Santiago, Chile, uh, Valparaiso, Chile, and Buenos yeah. Aires for a few weeks. The silver baby um, mint into the pieces. You know. um, but what was beauty is the beautiful part of it as it's, it's going around. That piece now is worth five dollars, and people can bring back a certificate and exchange it for the new value because it's based upon a certain amount of silver. It's the same amount of silver. But because the Federal Reserve now has gone up, they can bring it back and exchange it for the higher okay. number. Can we go back as to how yeah. the system was taken down and why? Obviously, it was centralized, so you guys were like the Federal Reserve printing money. Well, no, at no. some point. Printing right? medallions. Okay. So, medallions. Uh, hey, it was a lot of fun. It was great to get a tour. I didn't really know much about it, so uh, I now feel like I know what that world's like, and I'm happy to, to uh, see it. What did I learn? I learned um, it, this could be tradable. The extent to which the whole world exists with this, uh, uh, with with bitcoins, you have companies that are actually going public with that currency, and uh, tons of other currencies. I didn't know that existed either. So it was fun to see a whole new world. And would you recommend that class? Oh yeah, very much. Yeah, if you want to learn about bitcoin, this is this is the way to do it. Practitioners, they're not going to share their intellectual knowledge. Okay. That was my, so my role, and I, I didn't want to share my compliance program. It wasn't a social competitive advantage for me. I could get back accounts, and she couldn't. So you know, having proof that having a compliance program is competitive advantage is what happens with Megan putting this today. For, for example, Amazon payments or eBay or some form of checkout, right? Every, there's more and more checkouts every time, right? There's some time, a long time ago, we said, oh, PayPal, oh, that's cute, that's kind of, kind of uh, cool, right? I'm connecting my bank account here, and someone has to connect their bank account, and since both of us are not seeing each other, this broker is actually tra transferring value. Our first meeting, we, uh, we both have uh, respective internet businesses. I run an eBay shop and possibly looking into an e-commerce store for uh, collectibles and things like that, and she makes handmade jewelry and stuff. We're just looking into Bitcoin as a potential uh, source of, uh, you know, accepting as, as far as payment is concerned, and you know, just want to understand the risks involved and things like that, and also possibly uh, maybe interested in becoming a miner somewhere down the line as well. Yeah, very difficult to remain anonymous on a yeah. network. True story. True story.
What else we have here? Um, <clears throat> here's another thing to reduce latency in network processing. Basically, there's usually like a hundred millisecond sleep in the message processing thread, but if uh, you've got waiting incoming messages, it's going to now uh, doing a great job, and, and I definitely invite more people to to join this space and and, and learn from from a lot of brilliant minds that that have a lot, a lot of, of knowledge to bring to the table and, and help join together in this movement to, to move the world forward. Awesome. DC pay guns against other cryptocurrencies. And then they have a prank coin one, which I didn't take a snapshot. It's another so called prank coin market where it takes prank coin against other cryptocurrencies. Usually the CPU mine ones, because prank coin is uh, uh, right now you only mine it. Uh, most people just mine only the CPU. You cannot. Uh, ASICs won't work with prank coin. What? No coin you do. Can you say that again? What coin? Prime coin. Okay. And it's coming up pretty fast. Uh, they, the, the main developers of Prime coin was the same developers that uh, pioneered uh, PP coin, which pretty much uh, the PP coin. Does so have any uh, cryptocurrency exchanges which shut down? No. Uh, but exchanges from Bitcoin and USD have. Yeah. Yes. And some of the crypto, like you're saying, like, uh, was it Cripsy that does crypto to Sovereign? Oh, no, that's BTCE. That's BTCE. Yeah, okay. and they're Russian. They're Russian. Yeah, they're they're Russian. So, yeah. So, they, like, the United States can't go against me. Hey, can I? Right. So. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> So I also have another question. So in terms of trading, right, I guess there's buy low strategies. <laughs> what do you think about the class? Yeah. I thought it was very informative yes, yes, yes. and uh, very well presented and a good location. It was great. And I learned you, a lot. Well, was that a lot of, uh, do you recommend this? Oh, absolutely. I think it's a good financial uh, instrument for the future and it's definitely where currency is going to hedge against inflation. So I think it's a good investment and it's uh, something I definitely want to look into further. Great, great, great. Do you sober? Same council. And gold and silver is money. It is money, I'm not saying it's not. But silver, I still believe gold is the ultimate. Gold is just a jewelry. Gold is just a jewelry. Gold is just a jewelry. It's inviting competition. Yeah, it's a competition. As long as there's opportunity. Yeah, I think it's pretty likely. So you do a couple of more investments. Reasoning behind it, I don't know. But um, it's like any robotic things that you can think about doing, you can do with the Raspberry Pi. Like you're, the sky's the limit. There's actually um. Yeah, right now it's you know it's kind of hot in here. Oh, you know, there's two of these. Uh, uh, yeah, two what I call them is like uh, the reaction chamber. All of it, you can kind of consider it as a very smart battery. And it's controlled through one output valve? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're just, uh, they're wide. Because they're identical. So you can... x is basically three childhood friends who decide to start a company uh, with with our passions in mind, which is basically uh, computers and gaming. Um, we founded this company in 2007, and we started in this 8x cubicle uh, to uh, repair video game consoles and also take freelance side jobs as, as web and design developers. Okay. Uh, as a developer, and along the way, we were featured on the Wall Street Journal, and we were quoted as one of the smallest shops in in New York City. And I take pride, and we take pride in that because we that means that we have made it. And uh, I take that as the phase one of our progress. And now we're currently on our phase two project, which is building a big community space where we not only work in that space during the day, but also we can somehow by night transform the space into a venue where we can um, oh, host, host, host uh, workshops and classes where various uh, business owners, artisans, 
can um, bring their knowledge to the table and either teach a class or a workshop so that they can benefit their community. Um, but not only where they can benefit their community, but also get their brand across. Yes. Okay. All right. Finally, that, that takes a lot of energy and you know, all that just to like have these thoughts. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, a group of, well, mainly a, t um, a company of three friends who have known each other for half of our life. We could say half of our lifetime, right? We say half of our lifetime. And we started off coming from three different intersections in, in terms of like um, industry. So I'm just I'm just going to talk. So, so okay. we, we come from like... Yeah, three different uh, industries, sort of. One, Pat comes from a web development background. Kenny comes from a uh, comes from a computer hardware electronics background. Want to stay home today? And I come from a graphic design background. And we sort of came together to sort of redefine the cubicle life. You know, we wanted to break down by redefining. The cubicle life. We have come together to build our own small business, and we've been in this community for over five years already. And I feel like um, we've our roots here have been very long, and we want to give back to the community finally, finally, uh, so that um, by doing so, by giving back, we want to share our knowledge with our community, and by doing so, we would need a bigger space. Um, we want to be able to build a modular space where it supports our day business, but by night we want to be able to transform this, this space into a workshop area where uh, perhaps um, local businesses can, owners of local businesses can use our space to share their knowledge of perhaps make it maybe like how to make a neon lighting or how to crochet. Or how to do some sort of um, some sort of printing, yeah. Or soldering. Or soldering, you know, um, we can teach our skills in terms of how to utilize a CMS, a content management system, or how to um, you know fix your own uh, Xbox drive or something like that. And I can teach about the basic uh, concepts of typography or how to use Photoshop or Illustrator.